Hello, it's me, Gretchen Rubin, coming to you from New York, New York, um, and I am going to be joined in a moment with my co-host and my sister, Elizabeth Kraft. We are the co-hosts of the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast. While we're waiting for Elizabeth connect, to connect, um, tell us where in the world you are watching. Um, it's always fun to see where people are, um, and I will get, and this is Ask Us Anything Friday, so be thinking of your questions and put them in the comments. And now I'm going to get Elizabeth. Ooh, they changed the interface, I believe. Um, let's see if was it. Oh, yeah, I see people joining. This is great. Utah. Oh, hey, Elizabeth. Oh, you've got your, you, we both got collared print shirts on. Well, I sort of have a collar, not really. I have a little mini collar. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. This is one of my Veronica Beer deeply discounted 80% off shirts. Yeah. Oh, somebody's here near Omaha. Because, you know, we oh. love Nebraska. Yes, um, we do. Yes, we know North Platte, Nebraska very well. Uh, Fort Cody is one of our favorite places. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, listen, you made quite a haul. I remember that you were very excited about your bargains. Yes. Oh, there's somebody else from Nebraska. And Lawrence, this is all. Our, these are all of our hometown places. Um, wow. So this is um, Ask Us Anything Friday, so you yeah. can ask us anything. Um, and Elizabeth, um, I'll start off by asking, do you have any exciting plans for the weekend? Oh boy. Um, no, I'm trying to think of one plan. <laughs> we haven't even talked about it. Uh, how about you? Well, we have something that no one's really looking forward to. I'm calling it the hopes and dreams conversation because since everyone's summer is completely disrupted and not at all what we thought it was going to be, we feel like everyone needs to articulate their hopes and dreams for the summer and kind of like have a plan for oh. what they're going to be doing. And um, I would say this is also like an opportunity for other family members to suggest what they think should be on that list. And so maybe no one's really looking forward to that particularly, but I think it's going to be a useful exercise. Uh, Gretchen, yeah. someone's asking when we first started the podcast, did we edit it ourselves or did someone else edit it? Sorry. Uh, it was edited by Henry Malofsky, who was our first producer and has gone on to great podcast fame. Yes. He, um, his current podcast he edited is called Wind of Change. And it is um, about sort of the fall of the, the, the Soviet Union, I think. And apparently yeah. it's amazing. I just have like literally I'm like 10 minutes into the first episode. Yeah, yeah. He also worked on um, the Missing Richard Simmons, yes. which is like a hugely popular podcast. He actually that. makes a funny cameo. Um, yeah, in when, they're, when they're like staking out the house, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and then the other guy's like, you know, where can we get like tequila shots? And Andrew's like, all the places. <laughs> He's very drunk. <laughs> um, somebody's asking what that hand cream is that you like, Eliza Elizabeth. Um, what is the, the hand Ahava, cream? Ahava, um, Ahava mineral hand cream, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I love it. I have it. It's not in, it's not in reach or else I would show it to you. Okay. Um, and someone was asking, where are you, Gretchen? It looks like a different background. Yeah. I just in, in a different location oh. today because of outside noise. Yeah. Um, nice. It's, yeah. um, different. Yeah, well, you know, different places. Change it up. Change it up. Um, somebody says, Gretchen, when will you write a book on how you quit sugar? Oh, that's kind of underway. So um, I'm not sure exactly what form that's going to take because there's sort of like a lot of different possibilities that I could use. And so um, basically I have a lot of it done and I now I just need to like put it into a particular form. Um, so I'm glad, very glad that you're asking about it and stay tuned because I definitely have not dropped that project. It's also going to feed into my book about the body and the senses because I'm going to talk about the sense of taste and how, I don't know, give me a thumbs up if you feel like you're overwhelmed by your love of sugar. Like I feel like I just, I don't enjoy how much I love sugar. Mm. Um, I just have such a crazy sweet tooth. I'd rather not have it than, 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 than like manage it. Um, but I am an abstainer. Um, but uh, oh, there we go. Got a thumbs up on that. Yeah, a lot of uh, abstainers. Yes. Oh, someone said Mad Men yet, Gretchen. I finished the series last night. My first time watching it was fantastic. No, I still haven't. You know what? We started watching that. Listen, I think you've what? watched it's The Last Dance. Oh, I've watched some of it. Yes. Oh, give me a Michael Jordan. 
the, yeah, that's the Michael Jordan documentary. We are really loving it. We're watching it as a family. We're watching like one episode every night and it's just like just the right thing because it's, I know nothing about basketball, by the yeah. way. Um, and we but, should go back. We've been watching it kind of scattershot, like, oh, it's on, we'll watch. We need to go back and like watch it, you yeah. know, yeah. Through, from the beginning. Well, Eleanor and I were watching Game of Thrones, and so that took up a lot of time. But now I'm thinking, like, I, I know that I'm going to love Mad Men once it starts. It just feels like a lot to start. But um, uh, but no, I haven't yet. But I know that I'm going to love it, everybody. Um, By know. the way, Gretchen, on the topic of hopes and dreams for the summer, now that things are what they are, Jack has decided he, this summer, is going to build a giant Lego town. That's going to be one of his projects. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, um, but see, that's exactly that's the kind fun. of thing that we're is like a hopes and dreams. It's just like, what do you want to do? You know, we always talk about like the pre mortem in your future self. It's like, what do you want to be able to say? This happened this summer mm -hmm. because I'm worried that if we don't have hopes and dreams articulated, then every day just sort of like fades away. So that yeah. I think building a Lego town like that's super cool. Um, someone said, "Have you both started reading the Dutch House? I really enjoyed it so far." Started it. We both yeah, finished, we finished. It. Yes, I love we it. loved it. It's yes, so everybody. Good. Yes, if you're just joining us, I'm Gretchen Rubin. This is Elizabeth Kraft. We are the hosts of the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast. This is Ask Us Anything Friday. And yes, the next um, book club choice for the Happier podcast is The Dutch House by Ann Patchett, which is a, a, a super beautifully written and page turning novel. Those two things don't always go together, um, but this one. It and does. she'll be joining us on the podcast July 8th. So yes. email yes. questions and comments for Ann Patchett. I'm so yes. excited to talk to her. Yes, yes. Oh, Hi. someone says I'm obsessed with The Last Dance. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, and somebody's saying I'm enjoying the Dutch house on audio. Yeah, it's Tom Hanks performing it. If you, I guess you're supposed to say you're performing an audio book oh. instead of reading an audio book. Oh, so. I didn't know that. I didn't mom either, but I noticed her, that. Mom says hi. Hi, oh, mom. Hi, mom. Um... Yeah, I love. I would love ideas to for happy projects with my kids to do during the summer. Boy eleven and girls nine. I will not um, be sending them to summer camp this year. Yeah, okay. Anybody who's got suggestions, put it in the comments because um, this is just a big issue uh, for everyone. Uh, Gretchen, one thing I noticed a lot of people are doing. I may have mentioned this. Is they're kind of investing in outdoor stuff. So like people are buying bouncy houses. They're buying those water slide kind of bouncy houses. Um, I mentioned wanting to get a ping pong table. It's like yeah. things to do to make it your home more of an activity center. Um, right. Of course, we have our papa shot. Yes. Um, oh, someone says scavenger hunt for kids. That's a really good idea. That would be really fun. And fire uh, pit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting though, like if you have kids that, I feel like what's really satisfying is if you have a big project, because that's something that like, extends day over day and it's big and so like a friend of mine her son was teaching him, himself to play guitar and i thought oh. that's a i mean that obviously isn't something that everybody's going to want to do but i'm like that's exactly the kind of thing that i think in the end will make you happier but you yes. sort of can't assign that to a child it has to come from within right yes. which is why i think it's great that jack wants to do the lego thing eleanor really wants to learn how to sew mm -hmm. um and like i don't know with a sewing machine and i don't know yeah. how to do but I think it would be great. And I think now yes. with YouTube, you can really teach yourself to do a lot of stuff. Oh, if anybody has any resources for a child, a 15 year old who wants to learn how, <laughs> learn how to use the sewing machine, if there's anyone like, here's, this is like the guru of how to learn to sew, I know nothing. So put it in the comments, that would be, um, that would be useful. Oh, someone says, did, um, did two ice cream runs, but it is different now. Did take out seafood. Oh, you could do a taste test. That could be fun. Yeah, I just we test. talked about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, someone saying sewing is impor an important life skill. It is. I mean, I can sew on a button sort of, but that's it. Yeah. I have no idea how to sew. Um, <laughs> my sister-in-law like made all her own baby clothes. Um, and they were simple, but they were really cute. So oh, I, was wow. very, I was very impressed with that. 
Ask a grandma or aunt about learning to sew. Yes, um, Eleanor's grandmother, uh, well, our mother knows how to sew a little bit, but she doesn't really like to sew. She used to be able to sew really, really well. I yeah, think she, she sewed like curtains, right, mom? I mean, her clothes. Amazing. She can yeah. really sew, but she doesn't really want to sew, I would say. Whereas my, my, my mother-in-law is more like the kind of person who wants to knit a sweater and like will, she doesn't really sew for fun, but I think she's pretty good at it. But, um, she made me a gorgeous baby blanket, Judy. Your mother that's right. That's right. She makes a great baby. Little havoc. So, um, yeah, so that's good. She could she could um, talk to her grandmother about it. Um, right. Um, well, people are getting more questions. And I also did find broken places, oh, good. spaces. Um, this is our book for the Instagram book club. This book club. Um, this book club, um, which we're talking about July, no, June 21st. June 21st uh, by, by Nettie Corafor. Nettie Corafor. Um, see, it's, yeah. you can see it's very small, so you but can don't be intimidated. But it's the kind of book that, even though it's short, like it's a big reading experience. Like you feel yes. like you're immersed in her her story. A, a lot happens. It's full of ideas. Yeah. It's a very satisfying to read, but it, but it and it is quite short, which I think sometimes it's nice to have a shorter book. Um, so it, said, oh, it would be fun to FaceTime with older relatives who know how to sew. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe Eleanor and Judy could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and someone says they're worried the book is going to be sad, but it's not. It's a happy book. Oh, it, it, sad yeah. things happen, but it's a happy book. Yeah, it is. And it's about someone coming into their um, vocation, which is like a, book, a kind of story that I love, which is how people find their work. Um, so Gretchen, the, oh, this yeah. is a good question for you. So everyone says, any advice for a young female attorney or any young woman starting out in her career? Even though you took a different path, do you have any advice for a young attorney? Ooh, well, I would say the best, one of the best, some of the best advice I ever got. So I had a boss, a very, very stern, terrifying boss who said to me, be polite and be fair and you'll be fine. That's oh. great advice. Um, we often talk about the fact what our father told us, which is um, if you're willing to take the blame when you deserve it, people will give you responsibility, which is easier said than done, but very true in my experience. And also there's a huge relief that people feel when someone takes the blame if they deserve yeah. it. So that's good. What is other good advice? Um, I think I did a whole blog post on work advice, and I think we did a didn't when we did a very special episode with advice for graduate for graduate. Uh, yes, but a lot of that would apply to people who are just starting out in a profession as well. Um, uh, I, here's a piece of advice: reread your emails and make sure that they do not have glaring typos and errors, because I think people really uh, make a bad impression when they send bad emails. So but, that would be my advice, and especially in an attorney, you want precision. Okay, but here, and here's something on that, which I know you and Sarah talk about that a lot, and I completely agree on Happier in Hollywood, your podcast, and I completely agree, but here's a kind of typo that I thought I was the only one who did it, but it, I, it's actually quite common, and it's like extremely important that you not make it, which is dropping a knot. So you're typing and you're saying, um, I'm, you know, I'm interested in blah, blah, but it's really, I'm not interested. Mm. Or um, they were responsive to this instead of they were not responsive. And I don't know what it is, why that is kind of a glitch, but I've noticed that I do it and I've noticed that other people do it. Like when it's clear from the context that the not is supposed to be there, but obviously you could be in a situation yeah. where someone could have exactly the wrong impression from what you said. So I think that's really, really important. That's great advice. Um, yeah. Someone oh, so says to treat oh, your paralegal as well. Always good advice. Oh, yes, 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 yes. There's a great British TV series called Sewing Bee. Fascinating to see what people can make. Oh, my gosh. If this is anything like the Great British Baking Show, it's like sign us up. I cannot think of anything that is more perfect for my daughters because they both love like super comfy, cozy, homey TV, bizarrely. And so mm -hmm. something called Sewing Bee out of England is like right, right what they want. Okay. Um, when are Liz and Sarah going to start doing their meet and greets again? Mm -hmm. Oh, Elizabeth. I don't know. You know, we were supposed to do one, I think like March 16th, which we obviously canceled. Um, yeah. I have no idea, not for a while. I mean, I don't think we'll do one until there's a vaccine. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 
Well, like, because it's, it's, they're very in your face. I mean, it's yeah. all about meeting and talking. And because it's always loud, you're really shouting. You're not just talking. So yeah. Yeah. I don't think it'll be safe for a while, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, and you're in Los Angeles and I'm in New York City. And so it's like, that's, that's, that's not going to be, that's not going to be easing up anytime soon. Um, oh, someone's asking what decluttering projects did we both do during co the COVID crisis? Well, one Gretchen that I will tell you, Adam just got a bee in his bonnet over, I guess, I don't know, a few days ago. We rearranged all the things in our kitchen cabinets, including the mugs. So we oh. pulled our mug collection. How many? We got did you a ton of mugs. Well, we probably actually got rid of about eight. But then we made a big box of ones to save because that, that have memories attached. So in that, we probably put about 25 or so. So we have much more space in our cabinets now. Um, um, so and he got rid of the KitchenAid mixer. So now your whole Well, it's, he didn't get rid of it. He I mean, he, it he, he, got, he moved it away. Yeah. Um, but you remember we talked on the podcast about using a mug as like a planter. Did you think about using some of them like pen cups or well I, yes i brought some as a matter of fact like my old happier hollywood mug with our old logo is going to be a pen cup this yeah. my sister-in-law gave me an l which is perfect because it's really heavy and then also i brought one of my view mugs um because you know barbara walters is my um spiritual master so i decided to have barbara on my desk that's so great yeah yes. so that's like well, i haven't filled them yet but i put them on my desk um yeah that feels good oh so i cleaned out our utility closet it was the middle of the night and i couldn't sleep and it was like oh. the most it was the most exciting thing uh, that i've ever done um if you're just joining i'm gretchen rubin this is elizabeth Kraft. we are the host of the happier with gretchen rubin podcast this is ask us anything friday so say hi and ask any question that you have in the comments um uh, we, someone... and, we, oh, and we've gosh. had a request for summer activities for children so if you have if you've figured out like a great hack, a great activity, something you're excited, something that your kids have come up with. Um, yes. Yeah, put it in the comments. Yeah. Someone's asking about being a type one diabetic, any advice for new um, people? Well, I, I was diagnosed with it when I was 34 um, and it was quite shocking. Um, my advice would be to get a, a uh, wireless monitor and or pump as soon as you possibly can. I don't have a pump. I don't feel like I need it, but I know people who have it love it. And I think the younger you are, the more likely you are to want that. But either way, a monitor means at any moment I can just check my blood sugar and it beeps if it goes too low, which is the, the important thing. So that would be my number one piece of advice. Now, and then does your, does your, I was trying to remember this, does your doctor get that, get that, that information he, if any he time does he, yes he does now he we've spent a long time figuring out how to do it so yes before he had to like plug it into his computer when i went in and download now i think he's just getting everything whenever he logs in but this is a good example because we've talked about the fact because of covid19 one of the kind of benefits of it is realizing that kind of with telemedicine that maybe you're not going to have to actually go in and see your doctor quite as often right. since it's so burdensome and this is another way where technology is permitting him to have kind of like all the yeah. most essential information at his fingertips he doesn't need yeah. you personally to be there to have yeah. this like really um so that's interesting um oh this is a great mug hack somebody says i put um the like halloween mugs in the halloween box christmas spring etc in the decoration box ah, so that's like my smart. my seasonal photo galleries where they're only you only use them during a certain time of the year so that's part of your kind of your decorations and then you put them away with the decorations. so that's that a is a good idea i don't let myself buy holiday mugs because uh, <laughs> there's just no end to that yes i i really i really do um you know resist those holiday mugs um gretchen someone wants to know um how you're feeling about resuming your visits to the met do you think it'll happen? Well, the Met did announce that they're hoping to open July 15th or, or like within a couple of weeks. And, um, you know, they're going to use all kinds of safety measures and precautions. I mean, the thing about the Met is it's gigantic and the ceilings are like, you know, it's, it's yeah. a huge, vast space. And so yeah. it's not like, um, 
you know, so, so that's, that's the reality of that. So, um, yes, I'm, you know, I plan to be one of the first, one of the first people through the doors. I'm really excited. Um, and I, you know, I, I know people who work there and stuff, and I know that they're, they are all just longing to get back themselves. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's going to be, that's going to be exciting. And it'll be interesting to see, um, how the experience feels different. I think it's going to feel very different um, from, you know, the last time I went, which I think was March 11th or 12th. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how many, if it's crowded or not, you know. Yes. Well, one of the things is tourists, because a lot of times when you go to the, you go, right. you go to the Met, it's tourists and, and school groups and stuff like that. So that's going to be very, very different. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, Someone says, I use favorite mugs for pencil and pen holders throughout the house. They make me smile. Yes, that's, I, that's a great idea. Someone says, ooh, I love and just can't resist a themed holiday mug. Um, I know, they are delightful. They are delightful, but you're right. I think, Alyssa, you have to recognize, like, that if you, if you went down that road, like, there's just no turning back. Yeah. Um, there's certain things where you're like, okay, you know, it just, it's, it's just... It's like collecting things with hearts. It's like, there's just too many things in hearts. Like once yeah. you start down that road, there's no, um, there's no, um, uh, there's no turning back. Um, but um, someone says, we're going to try having a glow in the dark dance party for our kids to celebrate the last day of school. Oh. Hopefully the first of many, we might do it every Friday night or something like that. Well, I love glow sticks. Um, in fact, I was just thinking about glow sticks. We did something, um, um, when, you know, uh, it's like a summer camp thing where everybody has the, the necklaces or the things around their neck and you, and it's, there's just so cool. And in fact, this is making me think, um, cause for my book about the body and the senses, I'm collecting examples of things that I say confound the body. So that's like, um, helium balloons or kinetic sand or super balls, like things where you're like, Ooh, they kind of violate the law of physics. And mm. I'm realizing glow in the dark sticks are mm. some that confound the senses because it's like, that's so weird. Like you break them yeah. and they, they start glowing. So that's a great example. And if you can think slime, of- Slime, Gretchen, glow in the dark slime. Yeah, it sounds like you're deep into slime in your household, Alyssa. We <laughs> have not embraced the slime. I think it came a little bit past my kids' time, um, uh, which is fun. Uh, for kids, a long-term project like build a doll dollhouse or um, create a Rube Goldberg machine. Yes, I think it's really, um, I think having a big project is something that's very satisfying for adults and children alike. Oh, someone says, what was the name of the book club books again? So for the Happier Podcast book club, it's Anne Patchett's book, the, the, the Dutch House, it's a novel, and we'll be talking to her on July 8th. So if you use hashtag Happier Podcast book club, you can put your insights and questions and we'll bring them up when we talk to Ann Patchett. Um, and for Instagram Live on June 21st, we'll be talking about Broken Places and Outer Spaces by Nettie Okorafor. Um, and someone was saying about, um, uh, for, for children, another thing I think for children is reading. Um, and if you are looking for excellent children's books, Nettie Okorafor made me think of this because she's written mm -hmm. several great YA uh, kind of fantasy novels. Um, I ha if you go to my website, I have my list of my 81 favorite works of children's literature and young adult literature. Oh, and by the way, who has read the new Suzanne Collins? Elizabeth, we were, we were texting about this earlier. Yes. I didn't even know about it. Yes, the author of The Hunger Games, Suzanne Collins. She also wrote the uh, Gregor the Overland, Overlander or Underlander, Gregor the Overlander series, which I also love, um, uh, which is about giant roaches living under Central Park. And yet it's really good. Um, but anyway, she wrote a book called A Song, uh, um, is it a song of song? No, a book of songbirds and a ballad of songbirds and snakes. I think I don't exactly remember the title, but anyway, I loved it. It's um, about snow, right? President Snow. It's about Coriolana Snow. Yeah, so it's a prequel, and I think a lot of people thought, well, it's not going to be any fun to read a prequel because we already know how everything turns out. But it's actually really. I, I felt that it really stood on its own, and. Um, um, it's very different, um, but it's really, really interesting. Someone says, I'm rereading The Hunger Games while I wait for the new book. You see, I didn't really remember Snow as a character as much. And so I think that kind of was lost on me. So I think, I think that, that, would be, um, that would be good. Oh, yes. Someone's pointing out that 21st, June 21st is a Sunday. So maybe we should say oh. June 22nd, Monday. Yes. 
Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. June twenty second. Okay. And isn't June twenty first like the spring the equinox or something like it that? It is, yes. Okay. My friend Joe Murray's birthday. There you go. Um, someone says, have you read J.K. Rowling's new book? Yes, Alyssa, do you know about this? She is releasing a fairy tale book called The Ichabod for mm. free online. I've read the first two chapters, which are the only two chapters that have been released, and they're quite short. Um, so it was a little bit tantalizing, I have to is say. It good? Um, it, it's sort of, they, they were very short, and there were only two of them, so it's kind of hard. It, it's a fairy tale, so it's sort of like, in this fairy tale land, there's a ruler who's got curly yellow hair. You know, it, we, we didn't really get into the plot yet, yeah. so. Um, yes, it's the longest day. And 21st is Father's Day. So it's the summer solstice, it's Father's Day, it's Joe Marie's birthday, it's the <laughs> hey, summer if anyone wants, anyone wants to offer Father's Day gifts, by the way, I'm always, um, I'm looking. Oh, and my books make great Father's Day gifts, if you're thinking about it. My 40 Ways to Look at Winston Churchill, I always hear from people <laughs> who either are giving it or getting it um, for Father's Day. Lots of, it's like he, Winston Churchill is clearly like branded Father's Day in the public yeah. mind. I did not know that when I wrote the book. Um, or my book Better Than Before also, for some reason, seems to be a book that people often give as a Father's Day book. I always kind of hear, like, I get like a little bit of chatter after, um, it's, it's so it's just fun for me to see like who gets what um gretchen someone's pointing out they've sort of discovered bonus space in their ooh, house because we bought the house for the deck but rarely used it in our busy lives now they're using it well i think so many people are experiencing a room that they've never experienced before like turning a guest room into a school room or an office um we've used our outside a ton um, well, it's funny because in Outer Order, Inner Calm, I talked about like that often people will buy, they will be attracted to a certain aspect of a house when they're buying it. And then weirdly, they don't really use it. Like they get really excited that there's a fireplace, but they never make a fire. They're excited about the deck, but they never use the deck. Or they're excited about like the breakfast nook, but then they never actually sit yeah. there. And so I think one of, one of the things I say um, in Outer Order, Inner Calm is like, think back to what attracted to you about your space and try to make sure that you're using it. And I think this is a time where like everybody is looking so closely at their space. My favorite story like this was a friend of mine um, who lives in London. I was talking to her on the phone and she was saying, I guess and she has a little townhouse in London and there's kind of, was kind of, kind of a being John Malkovich kind of little room wow. where they were using it as a storage room, but she decided she could use it as her exercise room. And I was like, Oh my gosh, you have to send me a photo of that. So it's like this little dollhouse room and she's very petite herself. So she was in there, like, you know, got her yoga mat out and doing her exercise. Of course, it's like full of stuff. I'm like, oh my That's gosh, amazing. Like, go there and clear your clutter for you. But she's so excited about it because she feels yeah. like now she has this whole resource. Yeah. I just get the giant, most giant buzz hearing her talk about it. Yeah. It is a good feeling when you use something you haven't used. Oh, someone says my laundry corner is now my home office. Mm -hmm. See, this is great. Cause if you're like, I don't need this much space for this. Like, let me tuck in my, uh, um, oh, someone says a sticker on measuring tape. No one measures up to you dad. Oh, that's, oh, cool. that's sweet. Um, yes. Yeah, we're, um, let's see in the vein of doing things that you haven't done before adam now has grilled twice so oh great yes um you know things are happening it's his version of bread baking as you know yeah. he's grilling apparently um well you really are he works so hard on that outdoor space and yeah. it's really paying off um because that's yes, always the is. worry is like you're like we're gonna pour all this like time and energy into something, and then is it really gonna be something that we use? So it's it's very gratifying that you actually are using it so much. Um, someone says I'm grilling so much during this time. You'll give us a thumbs up if you've been grilling a lot. Mm. This is Jamie loves to grill. It's not something we're doing in New York City. You can't but, really do that in New York. Yeah. No, you can't. But when he can grill, he does grill. It's like he it's just he likes to do that. Um, uh, uh, a lot of grilling. A lot of grilling. Yeah, people love to grill. Uh, you know what I love is grilled peppers, like red peppers and green peppers. Mm, I think me that's too. delicious. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so we will be back. Now we're in our new schedule. So Tuesdays and Fridays. Fridays are always to ask us anything. And we will be doing... Uh, oh, wait. Quickly, someone says... Okay, right, yeah, no. Um, somebody was talking about girling. Um, and we will be talking about broken places and outer spaces on June 22nd, which is a Monday, because we just realized that June 21st is like crowded with many other important yeah. activities. <laughs> um, so um, thanks very much for watching us. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Yes. Let's keep our hands clean and our minds clear. Bye. <laughs>